dynamic versus fixed torque compensation. Okay, so before we get into comparing dynamic and fixed torque compensation, what am I talking about when I talk about torque compensation? So first, when I'm talking about torque, I'm not talking about the output torque of the engine itself on the paramotor. That's something completely different. What I'm talking about is the torque on the paramotor itself as a result of the propeller spinning through the air. So, on a paramotor, we have Unreal, dude. Unreal, this marker's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to do this with only two colors now. All right, so on a paramotor, we have a propeller. And really simply, as that propeller spins, in my case, it spins counterclockwise like that, the propeller pushes through the air and you get a resultant torque in the opposite direction. Like that. This resultant torque effect is the same for any propeller or rotor-driven aircraft. So even single-engine aircraft have to deal with this. If you've ever flown a single-engine aircraft and you power up going down the runway, you know that you have to compensate with the rudder to keep it going straight. That's because of the torque of the propeller. Same thing for a helicopter. The helicopter's torque compensation is the tail rotor on the back. So if you've ever seen a helicopter that loses its tail rotor, it just spins out of control because it can no longer compensate for the torque of the main rotor. So torque is bad. It's an undesirable effect. So in order to deal with that, paramotor manufacturers incorporate one of two main ways of compensating for that. And that's dynamic torque compensation and fixed torque compensation. So let's get into that. Okay, examples of paramotors that utilize dynamic torque compensation would be the Scout Carbon, the Nirvana F-Lite. Uh, I saw the new MacFly has a frame out with um, dynamic torque compensation. Essentially, any frame that utilizes fins or lamelles to compensate for the torque is utilizing dynamic torque compensation, meaning that the amount of torque compensation you get is directly related to the propeller RPM. So as the propeller RPM increases, so does the amount of torque compensation that you get. Now, fixed torque compensation is a little bit different. Paramotor frames that utilize fixed torque compensation would be the Adventure Pluma, which is the paramotor that I fly, um, the Parajet Maverick, the Mini Plane, any frame that essentially offsets your hook end point, which offsets your thrust line from the center point of your wing, is using a fixed torque compensation strategy. And essentially what that's doing is inducing a turn in the opposite direction that the torque is trying to spin you. So, dynamic versus fixed. Onto the chart. On the y-axis we have torque, and I've just represented torque from negative one to positive one. Positive one being the maximum amount of torque you'll see at max RPM. This dotted line in the center here represents zero torque. So this is the goal of torque compensation. Ideally, your torque compensation line is gonna fall directly on this dotted line, which is your zero torque line. So if you're operating on this dotted line, it requires no pilot input to keep you flying straight. Okay, so the first line I'm gonna draw is gonna be the torque line. So assuming you have no torque compensation, what does that look like? Well, let's find out. So at idle, your propeller is not spinning. So if you have a clutch unit, the prop is not spinning. If you have a non-clutch unit, the prop is spinning, but we're gonna assume that the torque as a result of that is negligible. So at idle, you don't have any torque, so you're gonna be right here at zero. We're also gonna assume that the relationship between all the variables that I'm talking about is gonna be linear for the purposes of this video. So at idle, we have no torque, and at max RPM, we'll have our maximum amount of torque, which we've represented here at positive one. So we'll be right about there. Probably help if I told you it was on the x-axis. So on the x-axis, we have prop RPM. So all the way to the left, we have idle. Somewhere around this region, you'll have a level flight. So the amount of RPM it requires for you to maintain level flight. And then here is your maximum propeller RPM. Okay, so back to the torque line. So zero at idle, max at max, draw this line. Worst case, torque line. So if you had no torque compensation at all on your paramotor, this would be the torque that you would deal with and you'd have to compensate for. So remember, the goal is this zero torque line. So if you had no form of torque compensation, to get this line to fall flat onto this dotted line requires all pilot input. So weight shifting, using brake to turn, whatever it may be, it's gonna require pilot input to keep you straight. Something else to mention here is that torque can be so bad in some cases, especially depending on, on how you're hooked and that it can actually twist you. So torque's a bigger deal with a paramotor than it is a fixed engine aircraft, for example, because we're actually hanging from the wing and we act as a pendulum, but I'm not gonna get into any of that here. We're just gonna talk about torque compensation. So the next line I'm gonna draw is gonna be the dynamic torque compensation line. So this line will represent paramotors like the Scout Carbon, the Nirvana F-Lite, the Mac Fly with the new lamelles on it, or any paramotor that you put anti-torque lamelles on. This is gonna represent that. So let's think about it. Dynamic torque compensation relies on airflow over those fins or lamelles to provide torque compensation in the opposite direction of the prop. So it's directly proportional to the propeller RPM. So at zero RPM or idle, we're not gonna have any torque compensation at all. 
which is fine because we also have no torque. So we're gonna fall right on that same line. No torque compensation, no torque. And as the propeller RPM increases, we're gonna see the maximum amount of torque compensation at our max RPM. So let's just assume it's gonna be somewhere right here. What's that line look like? Something like that. So this is your dynamic torque compensation line. So again, zero at zero, you realize your maximum amount of torque compensation at your maximum propeller RPM. So again, this isn't perfect, but it's much better. We've flattened that line out and gotten closer to this zero torque line. So now the required pilot input via weight shift or brake, whatever it may be, is only this amount or this amount. You get it. It's the distance between those two lines is going to require some type of pilot input. So I can speak from experience on the Scout. I have a lot of hours on it. The torque compensation was good. I liked it a lot, but it wasn't perfect. That max RPM is still required a little bit of weight shift or sometimes some brake to keep you going straight, but overall it's a good system. Also keep in mind that this line is fixed. In most cases, you cannot adjust the torque compensation on a unit that is utilizing dynamic torque compensation. Obviously, if you add or remove torque lamelles, you can adjust it that way, but most of the time it's built right into the frame and you can't adjust it. So now on to fixed torque compensation. So as a reminder, the Adventure Pluma utilizes this, the Parajet Maverick, those types of frames. So what's that gonna look like? So fixed torque compensation is independent of propeller RPM. It has nothing to do with how fast the prop is spinning. It's built into the frame. So at idle, we are gonna still have some type of torque compensation. So let's just say at idle, we're gonna be right here below the line. Since we want our torque compensation to maybe cross this zero torque line at level flight line and max out somewhere over here, we're gonna have to set it so we actually are inducing some type of turn at idle. And let's just say we'll realize our maximum torque compensation right about here. So there's our fixed torque compensation line. So notice here that anywhere left of where the fixed torque compensation line crosses the zero torque line, we have to weight shift in the opposite direction to keep going straight. So in the case of the Adventure Pluma, you actually have to weight shift a little bit to the right since the fixed torque compensation induces a turn to the left. So as the propeller RPM increases, so does the torque that it puts on the frame. So the amount of input that you need to the left of this is gonna reduce. So here you're putting in that much input, here that much, and so on and so forth via weight shift or some type of break. And then once you cross the zero line, you're weight shifting in the opposite direction, putting pilot inputs in the opposite direction. So weight shifting in the opposite direction or using your brake to turn in the opposite direction. One thing about fixed torque compensation is sometimes it is adjustable. So on the Adventure Pluma, for example, it utilizes a torque compensation strap and it's right here. So on the ground, you can actually set how much that strap pulls on your harness and turns you in the opposite direction. So you can actually move this line up and down. So you can't change the slope of the line, but you can move it up and down. So you can move it so it crosses exactly at that level flight line, or maybe you want it, maybe you want to have to put a little bit less input um, at your maximum amount of torque. So you want this to be closer to the zero torque line there. It's adjustable so you can, you can get it to where it feels comfortable. Now I've owned paramotors that utilize dynamic torque compensation and I've owned paramotors that utilize fixed torque compensation. They both work, but here's my idea. So what would happen if we combined fixed torque compensation with dynamic torque compensation? So again, keep in mind the goal is this zero torque line. This is where I wish I had a third marker. So if we combine dynamic and fixed, we're no longer gonna be at zero torque compensation at idle because we're gonna have some type of fixed torque compensation built into the harness or the frame, whatever it is. So we're gonna have some amount here. But since we have dynamic torque compensation and fixed torque compensation combined, the slope of that fixed torque compensation line is gonna move in that direction. It's gonna flatten out. So let's just say it would look something like this. Okay, so you can see that that line's flattened out. It's gotten closer to that zero torque line. And again, I would not flown a unit that utilizes both of these at once, but this is where I got my idea to do my next project. So on my Adventure Pluma, Again, it uses fixed torque compensation um, and it works. I've got it adjusted to a point where it's not that big of a deal, but I am weight shifting to keep it flying straight at different RPMs and whatnot. Um, so I'd like to have that dynamic torque compensation as well as the fixed torque compensation. So if you remember back when I crashed my Scout, that gave me the uh, opportunity to hone my carbon fiber repair skills. And I'm gonna try to make carbon fiber lamelles or fins and build them onto the carbon fiber frame of the Pluma. So right now the Pluma just has straight spars, which is a great foundation, I think, for building some type of fin or lamelle or something like that. So that's my next project. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. Probably gonna use some type of foam core, lay up the carbon fiber. I don't know if I'm gonna do it with molds or, or what, but 
That's my idea. I want to combine dynamic and fixed torque compensation on the Pluma to make it absolutely perfect. So there you go, guys. That's dynamic versus fixed torque compensation. I hope that makes some kind of sense to you. If I miss something, drop it in the comments. I'll try to answer or address it somehow, but this is how it makes sense to me. This is what I've been thinking about in my head while flying the Pluma and flying the Scout and flying my mini plane and all the other motors I've flown. I've been thinking it'd be nice to have both some type of adjustable fixed torque compensation built into it where the amount of pilot input required is minimal. You know, that's like a butt cheek here or a butt cheek there, um, but so small that you don't really care about it on, on either side of this zero torque line. So definitely no brake input and just very, very minor weight shift input. So the Pluma has awesome weight shift already. So I think that a combined system would be awesome on that machine. If you guys are interested in following along with that project, be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. And thank you guys for watching. I got nothing else. Peace.